الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد All praises belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praises and blessings be upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My dearest brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May Allah's peace, blessings and safety be upon you all and I welcome you all to episode 3 of our series brought to you courtesy of the Islamic Council of Europe titled Hajj and the Family common foundations in episode two brothers and sisters in islam we discussed the importance of roles and we connected this to the lesson of episode one which was dedicated to the fitrah and all of this in light of the days of hajj the family of ibrahim alayhi salam and some of the actions of the actual hajj subhanallah and um, as we said in episode one there are no better days to uh, look at the hajj and contemplate how we can better uh, the family uh, situation, the family uh, unit, the family household, how each member of the family can better themselves. It's no better days aside of these days and no better days to have uh, these discussions than these days that we are in, the best days of the year, the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah. In today's episode, brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to continue with this discussion about roles, but from a different perspective. In our last episode, we spoke about the role of the husband and the role of the wife and how everybody must play their roles and be excellent in how they play their roles and in doing so we will create a transformative family and eventually inshallah transformative societies. Today I want to discuss uh, this uh, idea of roles and topic of roles from the perspective of uh, a parent and the perspective of a child because uh, now we move the story of Ibrahim further and Ismail alayhi salam is uh, an older boy and some of the scholars uh, pivot him to be around the age of 12 uh, or around the age of 14 or somewhere uh, in between and Ibrahim alayhi salam subhanallah during the days of Hajj right the days that we are in he starts seeing a dream and this dream recurs with every passing day of the earliest days of Hajj and in this dream he sees himself subhanallah um, sacrificing Ismail alayhi salam right and um, at first he doesn't give it uh, its due importance it's a dream but then it it, it, it appears to him again and again and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed reveals to his messengers through dreams and Ibrahim alayhi salam understands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing him instructing him towards something that is a mighty trial a mighty test subhanallah this is even greater than the last test the last test i had to take my uh, to take my son ismail and leave him with his mother in the middle of nowhere but you know even being in the middle of nowhere they still hope that i'll see him again this time it's about actual actually sacrificing him putting a knife to his neck and sacrificing him for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no doubt allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was testing ibrahim alayhi salam ibrahim alayhi salam manifested from a young age how he always had allah in his heart and everything else in his hand and now he had a son and we know brothers and sisters in Islam how our children sometimes can be a means of our downfall they can be a means of us making mistakes in our faith Ibrahim alayhi salam was being tested but being tested by Allah who knew who knew what Ibrahim alayhi salam was about and what uh, he is capable of no doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not place a burden upon anyone greater than that person's ability to bear it Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, here his uh, role as a father uh, comes to light brothers and sisters in Islam right because um, as a father you have to be a father uh, in light of you being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's ultimately the greatest form of fatherhood when you execute your role right in light of you being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's you being a true father right because this is you being a father in a way that builds your jannah and not burns your jannah in a way that builds the uh, the everlasting abode for eventually yourself and your family because we know brothers and sisters in islam as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the quran that when a family passes away and 
um, uh, elements of the family get to a higher paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise the elements that didn't make it there, that were at a lower paradise so that they can be together as a family unit in the paradise where, uh, in the highest paradise, the paradise where uh, certain elements of the family uh, reached uh, and had a privilege of reaching. Um, and this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the family. So if the parents uh, are at a higher level in Jannah and the children at a lower, Allah promises to raise the children to the, to the level of the parents and vice versa. If the parents get to a higher level in Jannah and the parents don't, Allah will raise the parents so that they can be as a family in Jannah with their children. So if you really want to be a true father and execute your role well, it cannot be at the expense of you being a servant and slave of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, Al Wahid al Qahar. Ibrahim alayhi salam takes it on, on the chin. He understands what he needs to do. And um, since we connecting everything to the days of Hajj, it is said that the eighth of the Hijjah is known as Yom at Tarwiyah, right? Tarwiyah from the from the uh, from the form Rawa Yurawi Tarwiyatan, the Arabic form of the word Rawa Yurawi Tarwiyatan, which refers to the action of contemplating something over and over again to develop an understanding from uh, this thing that you're contemplating over and over again. So it was on the 8th that he did this. And then on the 9th, Yawm Arafah, Arafah means to know. This was the day that Ibrahim knew what was expected of him. And Yawm al Nahar is the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, the day of slaughter. This is the day that Ibrahim put uh, the knife on the neck of his child. This is one explanation of the other of the scholars. There are other uh, explanations such as the eighth referring to the, the day of watering because uh, tarwiyah refers to also uh, watering where you take your animals and get them to drink to their fill and you fill your water skins and your uh, your buckets and so on and so forth because you're going on the journey of Hajj where there's no water. So you need water supplies for wudu and drinking and cooking and also for your riding animals. And as for Arafah, then it's Arafah because of the plains of Arafah. And as for Nahr, it's it's the day of the Hadi and the Udhiyah, the sacrifice of Hajj and uh, the sacrifice that Muslims do generally known as the Udhiyah or the Qurban or the Qurbani, depending on which uh, uh, which place you come from. So uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam now uh, executes his role as a father excellently and he makes his way to Ismail alayhi salam. Remember Ismail alayhi salam is, is somewhere and Ismail alayhi salam, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam is somewhere and Ibrahim alayhi salam meets his son. But subhanallah, look at this father and look at this uh, conversation because um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, Subhanallah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, highlights that uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, or you get the impression that Ibrahim alayhi salam waited for Ismail alayhi salam to be ready to have the conversation with him. Subhanallah, this is the impression you get from it. That yes, Ibrahim uh, Ismail alayhi salam uh, came of age, but also he, uh, he reached a circumstance and situation where Ibrahim felt he was ready to have the conversation with his father. That his father would not set him up for failure. His father would not say to him anything that will make him slip, make him utter a word of disbelief, make him lose his faith, make him doubt Islam. Submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which by the way, his father was teaching him. Yes, Ismail grew up in what we know today as Mecca and Ibrahim in Palestine. But Ibrahim never left his role as a father. He would travel up and down despite it being hard, making the difficult decision because it was the right decision to make and making the difficult journey because it was the right thing to do up and down from Palestine to Mecca to raise his son, to check on his son, to instruct Hajar, to make sure everything's in order. And he prepares his son to have this conversation. And when he is confident that my son won't slip, he says to his son, Ya Bunay, O oh my dear son, Inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk. Indeed, I continuously see in my dream that I am slaughtering you. So you tell me what you feel. La ilaha illallah. He doesn't have to know what Ismail feels. The de decision is with Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed. Doesn't matter what Ismail says, but this is how you execute fatherhood. When you execute fatherhood in light of you being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do it as it should be done. You play the role as it should be played. You respect the person in front of you. And also you can see that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he knows how hard this is for him himself. It's as if he's looking for the thumbs up, the green light from his son to say, Oh my father, 
I understand what you're saying. Go ahead and really, that's what Ismail said. He said, Ya abatif al matu umar, oh my dear beloved father, subhanallah. I mean, uh, in episode one, we spoke about how Ibrahim السلام, was talking to his father, his father who threatened him, who was harsh towards him, who uh, or was oppressive towards him. And Ibrahim used to say, Abati, Abati, oh my dear beloved father. And now, years later, Ismail is saying to his father, oh my dear father, oh my dear father. But this time upon haqq, Ibrahim is doing the right thing. Whilst Ibrahim's father was not. Ismail says, Ya Abati, oh my dear father, if alma to umar, do what Allah has told you to do. I'm telling you that I have understood what you've taught me about Allah all these years and that above you is Allah and above me is Allah and it doesn't matter what I want and what you want, what matters is what Allah wants and from him we came and to him we will return. This is basically what he's saying. He's making his father proud, telling his father that my dear father, I bear witness that you were a great father. You played your role well. You played your role well in raising me. So I am te- I'm saying back to you what you knew I would say to you as a result of you raising me well. Do what Allah has told you to do. Satajiduni insha'Allah min as sabirin. Subhanallah. He says, you will continuously uh, find me trying and trying to be from the patient. Trying to and trying to be from the patient with the will of Allah. But my dear father, I can't tell you that I will be patient. But I will tell you that insha'Allah I will be patient. Because I am a human being and what you are saying is very difficult. But you have my word that from me you will not see me giving up. In terms of trying to be patient and making this as easy as I can upon you, my dear father, you will find this from me. And this brings us to Ismail and the role of the son and the son doing what the son should do. Subhanallah. And the son being a son in light of him being a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all about roles, brothers and sisters in Islam and everybody doing what they need to do and everybody behaving as they should behave. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I'm just looking at the time. Our video is, 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 uh, is, is getting longer than it should. They asked me to make it only a few minutes. But how can we talk about uh, something like this in just a few minutes, my dearest brothers and sisters in Islam? And Subhanallah, Ibrahim and Ismail make their way towards Mina, towards uh, the slaughter place, which uh, you do see. Uh, Allah knows best if it is uh, authentic, but there is a, uh, a particular uh, marker on one of the mountains of Mina, uh, near, uh, mas- uh, near the, the, the famous masjid in Mina and, and, and the, the, the hospital of Mina. Uh, and it is said that that is the place that Ibrahim السلام, eventually laid uh, the knife upon the neck of his son. And uh, there's so much to the story, brothers and sisters in Islam, but we will leave that for another uh, episode. I hope we have really absorbed this concept of roles. In the last episode, we discussed the importance of being a husband uh, for the sake of Allah and a wife for the sake of Allah and not trying to switch those roles in today's episode how to be a parent for the sake of Allah and a child for the sake of Allah may Allah uh, inspire us forgive our past and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our futures and make us the best that we can be ameen ya rabbil alameen until next time assalamu alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله